Let's go next to uh, our next guest. U.S. President Joe Biden also says that he will speak to the nation later this week about his decision. For more on that, we have reached David Litt in Washington. David is a former speechwriter for President Barack Obama. He joins us now. So, uh, David, thank you for being here. When President Biden does formally address the nation about this decision to step aside, what are your expectations in terms of what we are going to hear from him beyond that letter he released yesterday? I think Joe Biden is a man who is really deeply comfortable with the heartfelt part of public service. I mean, I, I started my career in politics as a field organizer in 2008 for Barack Obama's presidential campaign. Um, campaigning for vice president, Biden showed up. He spent time with 10 of my volunteers backstage. He spent like, you know, 15 minutes. The, his aides were trying to get him moving. He wanted to talk to everybody. He wanted to hear everyone's story. If somebody had a loss in the family, he wanted to give him a hug and tell him what he had gone through. So I think we're going to see a really emotional president. And I think we're going to see someone talk to us about service and this idea that power in America doesn't belong to one person. Right? We don't want a king. Power belongs to the people. And, and public servants give power back to the people. And that's what Biden did in deciding to step aside. After that, you know, now infamous CNN debate, there were these repeated calls for him to step aside immediately after. He doubled down in multiple interviews. Do you expect him to dis explain uh, his decision and how that changed and when it changed? I don't think so. I think that's all the inside baseball stuff that the truth is voters don't really care about. And, and I think it's going to be an interesting book one day or an interesting you know, docuseries on what happened over the last three weeks. It's fascinating for political junkies. The voters who Joe Biden cares the most about, who he's fighting for every day, and the voters who are going to decide this election, they're not political junkies. They are not obsessed with the process. What they care about is who Joe Biden is, who Kamala Harris is. And also, I think it's a chance for Biden to, to look back on 50 years of public service. I mean, he was sworn in as a senator when he was 29 or 30 years old. And he's now leaving as the oldest president we've had. And, and through almost all that time, he served the public. Um, it, that's a really remarkable thing. I mean, it's a pretty incredible career in, in American history. There aren't very many people who have that kind of experience over that length of time. Uh, you know, as you said, 50 years in public service, he has a lot to draw on for this address. What, what, what do you think he will focus on in terms of his legacy and his uh, political experience? Yeah, I don't know um, exactly what he'll focus on. I, as you said, he's got a lot he could talk about. But what I think he will talk about is the, the notion of passing the torch and of the future. Um, this, this obviously, you know, his decision, the, his political future is coming to a close. He's not going to be a candidate in this election. But in stepping down, not just when he did, but how he did, he's really saying this election is going to be about the next four years, not about the last four years under Biden, not about the four years under Trump before that. It's going to be about our collective future as Americans. What do we want out of our government and our country? And that comes down to these basic questions about how do we, the people, want to govern ourselves? It sounds corny to say it, but you know, it's, it is one of the things that makes me proud to be an American. It's something that I, I genuinely love about our democracy. And I think the truth is most Americans, regardless of who they vote for, they love it too. Let's talk about Kamala Harris for a moment here uh, before I have to let you go. But, uh, you know, we did hear from uh, the vice president today just moments ago. Uh, we will hear from her more often, you know, in the days to come. And she will have some pretty significant speeches. What are some of the key messages? What's the tone that you think that she needs to strike here uh, in the next 106 days with those speeches? Well, let me put it this way. Um, earlier in the program, you had on a Republican strategist who seemed like a nice guy. Um, I've spent the last couple of weeks kind of stammering and vamping a little bit, trying to figure out what to say because there weren't a lot of good options. And so I recognize that in his tone this evening. And as a Democrat, I was fine with that. If you look at Kamala Harris this afternoon when she walked into that campaign office, I'll tell you two things that you notice. Number one, intense enthusiasm. Because they're, they, these are people who have been working their hearts out for Biden. Biden has stepped aside. And now they are running right into the breach for Kamala Harris. So the kind of party in disarray that the Trump campaign was hoping for, it's just not happening. The other thing that you notice is that Kamala Harris just made the strongest case against Donald Trump that we have heard 
possibly in any of the campaigns now that Trump has run, because she leaned on her own experience as a prosecutor and because Trump has gone out and committed more crimes since the last time he ran for office, both those that he was uh, alleged to have committed and he was indicted for, and those the felony convictions that he was convicted of. And so I think this was the first time that voters saw Kamala Harris. She certainly was not the caricature of a left-wing extremist that Republicans are trying to paint her as. And instead, what they saw is somebody who's got Trump's number and knows exactly how to prosecute this case. Um, this is going to be a tough election. I'm not trying to suggest that I know who's going to win or that I, I say, OK, Democrats, you know, we don't have to work for it. But uh, I will tell you, it's been a tough couple of weeks to be a Democrat, and uh, Democrats I know are smiling right now. Yeah, certainly are. It's an energized party, it seems like. David, appreciate the time. That is David Litt, former speechwriter for former President Barack Obama, joining us from Washington.